Femoral Neck Fracture Non-Union Femoral neck fracture non-union has multiple facets and it is important to understand all aspects of this important problem. So let's start with an example. The patient is 40 years old and had a displaced femoral neck fracture fixed with multiple cancellous screws about nine months ago. Patient still has persistent growing pain. He cannot bear a full weight on the hip. And when you see the patient, the patient have a painful limp, antalgic gait, difficulty in walking. The x-rays was not clear. It shows possible non-union. A CT scan shows the non-union with some various angulation. So what is the treatment? The treatment is removal of the hardware and valgus osteotomy. The scenario can be more complicated by adding a healed femoral shaft fracture to the non-union of the femoral neck and in this case you will do removal of the hardware from the femur and do removal of the screws from the femoral neck and you will do valgus osteotomy and fixation with a plate preferably blade plate to treat the non-union of the femoral neck Intracapsular fractures of the proximal part of the femur are not common in adults younger than 50 years old, but they are associated with a high incidence of avascular necrosis and non-union. About 10 to 30 percent of femoral neck fractures go to non-union after ORIF. It is usually the vertical fracture pattern such as type 3 in Powell's classification. These fractures are more prone to non-union due to shear stress rather than compression forces across the fracture site. And also in garden type 4, where the fracture is completely displaced, the greater the displacement, the higher the incidence of non-union the operation rate after fixation of the femoral neck. Technical aspects. The inverted triangle pattern of fixation of femoral neck fracture is the one that commonly used with the inferior screw posterior to the midline and adjacent to the calcar. Achieving and maintaining anatomic reduction is important for femoral neck fracture fixation and healing. If femoral neck fractures are intracapsular, there will be no abundant callus formation during the healing. The healing is intraosseous only. Sometimes it's difficult to know if the fracture healed or not. There is no correlation between age, gender, and rate of non-union. Various malreduction correlate with failure of fixation, after reduction, and cannulated screw fixation. Posterior comminution of the fracture does not allow stable fixation and can lead to non-union. The comminution of the femoral neck is usually posteriorly and inferiorly. Some recommend adding a fourth screw in that situation. High energy fractures have worse prognosis for healing, especially in patients with metabolic bone disease and nutritional deficiency. When you see a femoral neck non-union, after fixation, you need to get blood work and rule out infection, get sedimentation rate and CRP. Clinical examination and x-rays. For the high angle femoral neck fracture, follow the patient up 
closely with clinical exam and x-rays, there might be a virus collapse on the x-rays. You may see a femoral neck non-union or a failed internal fixation. The patient walks with a limp, the limp is shortened, and the patient may have a rotational deformity of the extremity. Treatment. This video is based on one thing and one thing only, that in young patients with ephemeral neck non-union, arthroplasty is not a desirable option. In young patients with femoral fracture non-union, valgus intertrochanteric osteotomy with plate fixation produces a good result in the majority of cases. It produces approximately 80% union rate, and the procedure makes a vertical fracture more horizontal, converting the shear forces into compressive forces. When it is done in a healthy young patient with no joint arthritis and when the femoral head is intact, it also corrects the various malalignment. So basically, the procedure changes the vertical fracture orientation to a horizontal fracture to achieve compression. There are other procedures done in the young. Revision or IF with or without bone graft, and this procedure is rarely done. Another procedure is the free vascularized fibular graft. It is done in some patient, especially in the young patient with a non viable femoral head. How about the hemiarthroplasty? It's done in patients with low physical demands. The articular cartilage of the patient is preserved with no evidence of infection. How about the total hip arthroplasty? You do it if the patient is old. You do it in patients that have hip arthritis or if the head is not viable or if the hardware cut out. You can do it also in younger patients that are active when the head is not viable and the patient does not want free vascularized fibular graft, or the patient had collapse of the femoral head with non-union, then you would do a total hip replacement in the young patient. The problem with total hip replacement in this situation is more dislocations of the hip postoperatively. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.